So Donald Trump and Speaker Mike Johnson just had a press conference at Mar-a-Lago and it was a complete disaster. It went so poorly, probably could not have gone worse. You know, Donald Trump was answering questions from journalists. Mike Johnson introduced a new policy. Donald Trump was talking about his upcoming criminal trial and more. And I would describe the event as basically cutting campaign ads for Joe Biden and the Democrats. They just handed them a gift with some of the insanity that they were discussing during this press conference. So we're going to be looking at three different clips from their little gathering today at Mar-a-Lago. Uh, all of them are very, very crazy, very insane. We're going to be discussing them. And the first clip we're going to start with is Donald Trump talking about his upcoming election interference trial uh, starting this Monday in New York City. Now, before we look at that clip, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. It goes such a long way. Now, here is that Trump clip. So I have that and I have venue. We have all these things that we've asked for. They don't give us anything. It's a witch hunt that takes place in New York and that is taking place. And it's very bad for New York and it's very bad and it's very bad for the judicial system in New York. No, I'm testifying. I tell the truth. I mean, all I can do is tell the truth. And the truth is that there's no case. They have no case. And it yeah. Did you hear that? When asked about his criminal trial, Donald Trump says, of course, I'm going to be testifying. I only tell the truth. Of course, I'm going to take the stand. Really? <laughs> really? You know, me, a Democrat, proud Biden supporter, I fully support it. I think Donald Trump should take the stand. I think he should testify in front of uh, a jury in his own defense because that is bound to go poorly for him. <laughs> Donald Trump is a pathological liar. Every single time he opens his mouth, he is not telling the truth. So when he is sitting on the stand in front of a jury of his peers in a criminal setting, and he lies, and he falls into one of the traps that prosecutors set for him because inevitably he's going to lie, add some perjury charges on. Go ahead, throw him in there among the other 34 felony counts that he's facing. Oh, and by the way, it completely destroys his credibility as a witness. When he gets up on that stand, if he does, because I don't think his lawyers will let him, but it's a nice thought. If and when he gets up on that stand and just starts blabbering about 2020 or lies about very obvious truth, it's just not going to go well for him. So, hey, I am a Democrat and I welcome it. I say, yes, Trump, you do that. Go testify, sit on that stand and swear an oath that you're going to tell the truth and just let it fly. Just start talking. Just start talking. Go for it. And the reason why I'm so in favor of this is because do you folks remember how it went last time Donald Trump tried to testify in his own defense? The business fraud trial against him in New York City? Awful. <laughs> it went so badly for him. He incriminated himself. He was arguing with the judge, you know, the guy like determining his fate. It was just terrible. He kept like yelling at the judge while he was testifying under oath. He was insulting the judge while testifying under oath. He went on these like long five minute monologues about Joe Biden under oath. It was so bad. And there were points where the judge like threatened to take him off the stand because he would not answer the questions at hand. He would just go on like a Trump rant. He would talk about what he wants to talk about, not the important matters that were being discussed at hand. So, you know, it's not going to change if it's a criminal setting. He's going to get on that stand. He's going to go on these rants. He's going to either be reprimanded by the judge or the judge is going to let him keep talking and he's going to incriminate himself further or perjure himself. It's just going to be bad. That's the overall summary and the takeaway from the fact that Donald Trump is saying he's going to testify is that whatever way you pitch it, whatever way you look at it, <laughs> bad news for the Trump defense. And another problem I see for Donald Trump in this trial is his ego. It's, his ego is so big. He always thinks that he is the smartest guy in the room when that is never the case. You could have a five-year-old in a room with Donald Trump and they are likely smarter than him. And this causes him some trouble. It causes him some trouble, whether it be in his political career or his legal settings. Um, he always falls into some traps because he pretends to know more than he does, as we just talked about when he was testifying in the fraud case against him. He tried to like battle the judge. And of course, that didn't go well for him. And that would be the same thing here. But, you know, he just thinks he knows more than anybody. He thinks he knows more about the law than the prosecutors. He thinks he can defend himself better than his own lawyers. He thinks he can apply the law better than the judge. And he thinks he can determine guilt better than the jury sitting in front of him. And if he goes in there with that mentality and tries to take that mentality to the stand, oh, Man, it's a wrap. It is a wrap. He is going to find himself in some bad 
situations. The prosecutors are going to have him trip up and uh, stumble over his own words and whatnot. So I just want to reiterate, again, I fully support 100% Donald Trump taking the stand in this trial because it would just go. <laughs> it would go so badly, so badly for him. So anyway, aside from that, we're going to go on to the next clip. I just thought it was interesting that he's out there telling people he's going to testify and that he only tells the truth, which is an absurd statement. But he's going to testify, which probably is not going to happen. His lawyers aren't going to let him do it because, as we just talked about, not going to go well. Uh, but our second clip to look at is Speaker Mike Johnson, MAGA Mike, lunatic Mike, who tried to overturn the election in 2020. He was the lead guy in the House to do it. Um, he introduced a new policy, a new policy. The Republicans are putting forward a new bill in uh, the 118th Congress, who is one of the most unproductive since the Great Depression. So let's see what uh, Mike Johnson is proposing for the people. The federal voter registration form just has a check a box. And if you do that, you're good. The states can't allow it. Well, we think that's a serious problem. And so what we're going to do is the House Republicans are introducing a bill that will require proof of citizenship to vote. It, it seems like common sense. I'm sure all of us would agree. We only want U.S. citizens to vote in U.S. elections. But there are some. Yeah, you heard that correctly. That's the bill that Mike Johnson and the Republicans are introducing. I can hear the sighs like, oh, my God. Yeah, I don't know. Instead of focusing on the real issues facing Americans, not, you know, helping veterans or building more homes to bring down housing costs, none of that. Mike Johnson and Donald Trump at this big press conference are introducing an election security bill, right? They're, they're claiming that there's an epidemic, there's a problem of people who aren't American citizens voting in our elections, right? So they have to introduce this bill to further strengthen them. That is utter nonsense, utter nonsense. Our elections are safe and secure. I mean, we've been saying this over and over again since 2020, and this is not a problem. By the way, it's already illegal. It's already against the law for people who aren't American citizens to vote in our federal elections. Like, it's in the Constitution. They should read it sometime, right? It's in there. You cannot vote if you're not an American citizen. So they're trying to solve something that is already solved by the Constitution. So one, either they're playing politics, or two, they don't know the Constitution, or option three, all of the above. I'm going to go with option three personally. And I really just want it to be known for like every American that this is what Republicans are focused on, a non-existent issue, an issue that is already addressed by the Constitution of the United States, and it also just doesn't happen. There are so many people we could be helping, lives we could be making better with real policy, real policy that helps people and affects some change. But no, 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 no. Republicans with their House majority are, mo are more focused on playing politics. I mean, this is what it is. They're playing politics. Yeah, so while Democrats are focusing on real issues facing the American people, Republicans are doing stuff like this. Crazy, bonkers, bonkers. So aside from that, aside from that insanity, let's move on to the last and final clip I have for you guys today, where Donald Trump is talking about abortion, talking about women's reproductive rights. And again, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, he just basically cut a campaign ad for Democrats, and you'll see what I mean in a second. So here's that Trump clip. I wanted to have it go back to the states, Democrat, Republican, liberal, conservative, and we're able to do that. You know, what we did was give it back to the states, and now the states are working their way through it. And you're going, you're having some very, very beautiful harmony, to be honest with you. You have really Donald. Wow. Okay, you know, he, he is once again preaching this view of abortion should be handled on a state level. That's his view, right? That's what he's running on in 2024. The state should handle it, not the federal government. And he just described these state bans around the country as working beautifully. Beautiful harmony, he described it as. Perfect. Okay. So just to be clear, all of these Republican states around the country, especially in the South, that either outright ban abortion, make it six weeks, or have no exception for something like assault or uh, you know, something in that realm. That's what Donald Trump just said is working in beautiful harmony. Arizona, they just allowed their 1864 abortion law, a law that was signed in before Arizona was even a state. They just allowed this bill to go into effect. And Donald Trump thinks that that is working in beautiful harmony. There you have it, folks. Not only does Donald Trump claim and brag about his responsibility with overturning Roe v. Wade, but he's also saying that these bans are beautiful harmony. I'm almost certain that you are going to see this in a campaign ad very soon. Beautiful harmony. You know, women are 
uh, on operating tables, begging to get necessary reproductive care and being turned away. Women are having sepsis, sepsis in hospitals because they didn't get the care they needed in time. Some women and their fertility is threatened. Some women and their lives are threatened because of these Republican state bans. And in Donald Trump's view, that's beautiful harmony. That's his words, beautiful harmony. No, not, not in my book, not in your book, not in logical people's books, but that's what Trump is running on in 2024. So remember that. Don't let Donald Trump get away with trying to be a moderate on abortion because he's not. We just heard him. We just heard him. So yeah, the insanity of the Republican Party summed up in one press conference. Bad policy, conspiracy theories, trying to incriminate yourself on the stand, right? In your first criminal trial for a president ever. This is the Republican Party in 2024, folks. So anyway, going to leave it there. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe down below. It goes such a long way. Also, of course, drop a like on the video. Comment down below. Let me know what you think. Share the video with anybody you think needs to see it. And as always, if we work hard and we persevere, we're going to reelect Joe Biden in 2024 and beat Donald Trump.